but sometimes we don't always look at the context. It says, for by grace, here we are in the grace, for by grace you have been saved through faith, faith in Jesus, praise the Lord, and that not of yourselves. It is not, it, it is, I'm sorry, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works or obedience, that no one should boast. Look at what I have done. My friend is not going to cut it. What is going to cut it is look at what he has done. Look at what he's done for me in saving me through the shedding of his blood. I owe him everything. I owe him everything. But then it goes on to say, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. So in the relationship, we are created in Christ Jesus, Paul teaches, for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk or live in them. So is there a place for good works in the Christian life? Number one, we're saved by grace alone, not as a result of works that no one should vote. It's a, it's a gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God. But as we come to Jesus, we become his workmanship, the spirit and the love and the grace of Jesus is working these things out in our lives. We become his workmanship. You pick that up? We become his workmanship created in Christ for good works. And that's really centered in the relationship is what it talks about. Oh, Hebrews 8.10. I don't have time for Hebrews 8.10. I wish I did. What does the new birth experience mean? What does it mean that we become a new creation? If we simply go on in the same old ways of life, living a life of sin and of transgression, it means nothing. 1 John 2, the New Testament, page 185. Let's see, I've got one, two, can you handle two, maybe three or so texts? Okay, 1 John 2, the New Testament, page 185. 1 John 2, and we're looking at verses 3 and 4. Let's take it right to the issue of the relationship. How does this, this matter of the commandments relate to my relationship to Jesus? And here it is, 1 John 2, beginning with verse 3. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Now what does that text say? By this we know that we have come to know him. And, and what follows? How do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments? Is what the New Testament teaches. Because only the one that truly knows him is enabled through the love and grace of Jesus to keep his commandments. And truly keeping them from the heart is an evidence of the relationship. You see, keeping the commandments is not the means. Listen to this. Keeping the commandments is not the means of salvation. It is the evidence that one has been saved. There's a huge difference. And it goes on to say, the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. The New Testament is absolutely explicit and clear on this. I take you to 1 John 5 and verses 2 and 3, New Testament, page 186, where he goes on to say, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. Now notice how, again, loving God and keeping or observing the commandments are linked. And then verse 3 says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So love to God is defined by keeping the commandments. It is through the love of God that we keep the commandments. Romans 13.10 says love is the fulfilling of the law. Every principle is based on the, the pr principle of, of uh, love. Yeah, Sherry. Sherry was attending my series of Walla Walla, Washington years ago. I was preaching on this very subject. And afterwards, uh, there were some announcements taking place. I'd already stepped down off the platform. We were in a school setting. And then I saw she was the first one that came out. The meeting had not been dismissed yet, but she had come out. 
She saw me, made a beeline to me, and she said, she began talking to me. And at that point, the crowd broke, and uh, I took her down the hallway and down another hallway so we could talk privately. And she was convicted. The Spirit of God really convicted her as we've been talking about the commandments. She says, I'm living in sin. She said, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm living in sin. And she said, I'm, I'm living with my boyfriend. She knew as a Christian she ought not to be doing that. I had prayer with her, encouraging her to do what she knew to be right. But let me tell you, she went home. She sat down with her boyfriend. And before that series was done, they got married. And she chose to be rebaptized. Okay, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. There's a direct correlation as you take a look at it. I call this the impossible possibility. John 15, 5, for apart from me you can do how much? Nothing. That's where a lot of people leave it. Don't you know you can't keep the commandments? Oh yes, I do know that. But I have a savior. I have one who is all powerful. One who said I will abide in you and you and me. And oh, it goes on and on. But they leave out the potential that is ours through Jesus. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me, is what it says. And then Jesus. Oh, Jesus said it so beautifully in John 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The relationship is directly connected to that of this matter of our relationship to the commandments of God. Father in heaven, as we conclude our study tonight, how grateful we are for the word of God, your word, the Bible, the revelation. And Lord, we understand that every word has been given for our instruction. Instruction in righteousness has been given, every word, to teach us, to to open to us the principles by which, by faith and through grace, we are to live. And Lord, tonight, we have seen it clearly in your word that the commandments are relevant, so relevant. And Lord, we confess it. It's because we have been transgressors. We have come up short. We have failed. We have sinned. Lord, we have sinned. But you have pity and compassion you have dealt with us, not in accordance to what we deserve, but you dealt with us in such a tender and compassionate way. You provided a way out for us through Jesus. What a precious gift he is to us. That the Son of God would come to this earth, die in my place. I could have eternal life. We honor him. And we worship him and praise him. And we have given our lives to him. And Lord, how grateful to know that he will redeem us and he will save us from our sins, forgiving us, cleansing us, transforming us into his likeness and bringing us into harmony with your will as you've expressed it in the word and in your commandments. Thank you for saving grace. Thank you for saving power. It is my prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, the Ten Commandments in the New Testament announcements real quickly. Oh, financial stuff.